I'm here today to talk to you about alignment and community in isolation. And I want to start with this great quote. When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I am afraid. I love this quote by Audre Lorde, and I think it's very, very powerful, and I think it really applies to today's time. And if you don't know who Audre Lorde is, check her out. She was amazing. And so who am I? So first of all, I thought I'd start with a great photo. Yes, that is a real, actual meerkat on my head, as you do. So yeah, I am hugely grateful for everything and, and thankful for all the blessings in my life. I'm a 30-something troublemaker. I'm disabled, obviously, and, and I'm an exploratory storyteller and adventurer. I love creating relationships, stories, and magic. And I personally consider myself to be a continual work in progress. I'm the founder and chief purpose officer of this ability, and I'll tell you a bit more about that a bit later. But most of all, the thing that you need to know about me is that please, please, please don't call me inspirational or brave. Otherwise, I might just accidentally run you over in my power wheelchair, and I would really enjoy that if you call me inspirational or brave. So please don't do that. So yeah, for me, I've always been surrounded by constraints, and it, I've lived in constraints, I was born in constraints, and constraints are part of who I am my whole life. And those, some of the constraints include physical limitations, a deteriorating body, an inaccessible society, ableism, societal and community expectations and misconceptions, imposter syndrome, and an inverted nature. But you know, being constrained and underestimated has its advantages. The world is always crisper and clearer, and it allows me to be more, more creative. And that kind of relates back to my, my own disability and how um, disabled people in general having constraints makes us much more creative and gives us huge advantages. And, for example, these facts demonstrate that 43% of people do not personally know anyone who is disabled. And 48% of people have never even started a conversation with a disabled person. And disabled people are more than twice as likely to be unemployed than non-disabled people. And that's absolutely my own experience as well, you know, after university. And this is an absolutely interesting and shocking at the same time. And it comes from the Lloyd's State of Britain report. And it says that 90% of people featured in ads come from a minority background, including race, sexual orientation, or disability. Of that 90%, only 0.06% of people featured in ads have a disability. In comparison, in the UK, about 20% of the population has a disability. Wow, wow, wow. And so for me, it's about actually hanging in there and trying to just keep going forward. And because isolation is not just about the quarantine happening right now, but for many disabled people, and for disabled people in general, it's about, you know, just that being unable to, to be apart and engaged in society. And that's one of the reasons why I set up my own business, to change those facts and to change, to create a community. And, uh, yeah, and for those of you who don't know, the symbol that I use is very meaningful to me. It's an Adinkra symbol. And they didn't cross the wall from the Shanti tribe in Ghana. And it basically it means help me or let me. And let me help you. And it's a symbol of cooperation and inter interdependence. And which I thought was especially fitting considering that I'm trying to build a community through my business and my own personality. And so this ability 
is a disability led equity consultancy. We exist to ignite, empower, and amplify disabled creativity across the world. And so just to, uh, those of you who don't have an understanding, what am I talking about? Equity. And this really, really and simplifies it in a very simple term, just by this simple image. And as you can see, equality, sorry, is on the far left. And equality says that everyone benefits from the same supports. And everybody nowadays is still going on about equality and equality for all. But equality states everyone should have the same support. However, I am an equity consultancy working towards equity of disabled creativity and disabled people in general. And equity states that everyone gets the same supports they need, right? Gets the supports they need. And, you know, it is important to understand that because we don't all have the same background, we don't all have the same, you know, needs. So it's important to have different supports that everyone needs as individuals and things. So, for example, if, you know, somebody can use the stairs, equality says, oh, I should be able to use the stairs as well. Well, obviously that's not possible. I'm a wheelchair user. I can't use stairs. And so it, it, equity states that, you know, what we making needs adaptable and fitting and supporting each one as an individual. And that leads to justice, which, you know, the inequity is addressed and is completely removed entirely so everybody has, you know, equality in a sense. So basically, we're about changing the culture to make equity the default by destabilizing the accepted narratives of creativity and disability. As Angela Davis best says, I am no longer accepting the things I cannot change, I am changing the things I cannot accept. And so, you know, we are in a huge, massive time of influx and change throughout the world, and we are all isolated together. Yet community has never been more vital and more important to us all. You know, disability is highly isolating in itself, and the COVID-19 situation is making this hugely much worse for us. You know, self-isolation after choice is a luxury as well, because many disabled people don't have that choice, you know, to self-isolate. We're often forced to self-isolate, either because of an inaccessible society or because of our own disabilities. And that's not a bad thing, but that just needs to be acknowledged. And disabled people are self-isolation and community experts. And we're very, very, very good at that. And yet, we're still not in conversations and treated as expendable. You know, and this is extremely frustrating. And so this leads to ableism and an inaccessibility, which is quite dangerous and harmful. And no one thinks it affects them until it does. And this is what I mean. As you can see by this great thread that by Carrie Higgins, that I saw last month, that it really, really struck me to the core. And so basically, she's saying that, you know, every conferences are now live streaming, Starbucks is now doing disposable cups, you know, and you can do remote working. Yet when disabled people needed those accommodations, we were gassed and it, we weren't allowed to have this. And no, it's impossible. But however, now suddenly, all the impossible is, you know, very, very doable. And so, you know, very, very valid point. And, you know, how she states how accessibility benefits everyone. Let me say that again. Accessibility benefits everyone. However, you know, you only want to, to, to see it when it benefits the able people. And I completely agree with that. And I think those things need to change. And, you know, it's not only, 
in our society by our governments too, in our governments too. And so what I mean by that is this great thread that I saw a few days ago, you know, by Alice Wong, and, you know, how recently the NHS has been given, you know, a checklist and that charts to actually, you know, quantify and codify, actually, you know, on the chart to see who gets to live and who gets to die within the coming weeks. And, you know, many disabled people in the UK have been sent out, do not attempt to resuscitate or letters saying that our lives are not, you know, valuable and they're disp disposable. And I think that's very hard for many of us to even comprehend. And for me, it has been physically frustrating, very, very tough, you know, being physically disabled, mentally draining, and it was as well connected to my intersectionality, so being South Asian and having different intersects that's added to the stress, and especially as minorities are more likely to die in hospital than you know, non-minorities, and the ableism, the ageism, and also the racism within the medical community, and in this whole COVID-19 situation, it's a huge cocktail for disaster. And as I state, ableism is more likely to kill me than any virus. So ableism is a devastating thing, and it can cause so much harm and destruction. And even as a disabled person, I am constantly trying to unlearn and, you know, just unlearn ableism because it's something even myself is an ongoing process to unlearn, unlearn these lifelong inbuilt negativity that ableism and harm that ableism causes. And I think more likely the ableism will kill me over anything else. And however, I'm trying to revalue, reset and realign my entire life to celebrate my entire self this year and going, you know, forward. And, you know, I'm really, really trying to just, you know, celebrate myself and just revalue everything about my life. I think I'm important than anybody else. And so what do I mean by that? And this really comes to the crux of what I'm talking about today. It's alignment. And I absolutely love, love, love this when I saw this. Last year, it really connected to it. I had to share it with you all. And it talks about how, you know, instead of hustling, align. And it says, destroy the idea that you have to be constantly working or grinding in order to be successful. Embrace the concept that rest, recovery, and reflection are essential parts of the progress towards a successful and ultimately happy life. Now, isn't that great? And I can completely connect to that, especially in this time, you know, of change and unrest. We still want to constantly hustle, constantly be on the ground, yet we really need to be resting, recovering, and recharging, and just reflecting as a whole, you know, to just being still. I think that's what we should get. And, you know, and, you know, people who wonder whether the glass is half full or half empty are completely missing the point. The glass is very refillable. It's refillable. Let me say that again. People who wonder whether the glass is half full or half empty are missing the point. The glass is refillable. Thank you. Okay. So, for me, family is hugely important. And, you know, in terms of community, family is everything, whether by blood or by bond, you know, and that's hugely important. And my disabled global family is everything to me. Our community is resilient, creative, and diverse, but we need our lives to matter to society. And Alice Wong, a disabled woman, who I hugely admire and respect, says it best. She says, disabled people know what it is, what it means, sorry, to be vulnerable and interdependent. We are modern day oracles. It is time 
people listen to us. Wow. Just think about that for a minute. Wow. So, why is community so important? And Radha Agarwal said it best, and I saw this on uh, Don't Sleep On Us on Instagram, and I really connected to this. This is what she says here. She says, community and belonging are actually fundamental values and the measure of having a fulfilled life. To be human is to belong. We are literally born in community and attached to someone else. And to break that down further, this is from Radha. So what's belonging? Belonging is the opposite of loneliness. It's the feeling of home, of I can exhale here and be fully myself without judgment or insecurity. Belonging is about shared values and responsibility and the desire to participate in making your community better. It's about taking pride, showing up, and offering your unique gifts to others. You can't belong if you only take. And so what's community? Community is a group of three or more people who you, who you share of similar values and interests, you know, and where you experience a sense of belonging. And just think about that. A group of three or more people with whom you share similar values and interests where you experience a sense of belonging. And community of belonging is how we all are in tune with our experiences in the, of collectiveness of humanity, you know? So community and belonging is how we experience our connectedness of humanity, you know, especially in these times of extreme, extreme situations and change and volatility. And we cannot forget about community, you know, in these times, or belonging, in these complex times, and this is how we're going to get through life together, this is situation together. I think it's through, specifically, through community and belonging. But also, please, 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 we remember to be much, much kinder and more empathetic to your disabled friend, family, colleague, neighbor, boss, partner, lover, or other in these times, you know, with COVID-19, but especially in times of calm every single day. Reach out, check in, because we need more authentic allies to support us and champion us. And that's very, very important, I feel, and that I'm not seeing enough of either within communities and belonging. And so how can we create inclusive communities for all? So the first thing is to align, to rest, recharge, reflect, recover, restore and replenish. And I say that because I think we often are so busy helping the rest of the world, helping others, whether it's family or friends or organizations, or just the whole world in general, that we should forget about ourselves and that inner strength and peace that we need to actually prepare ourselves forward. I think we can only do that if we align and align, align, align. And so the next thing, we start with a hello. So as I said earlier, conversations are very, very important. And, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with a conversation. And just, you know, saying hello really breaks down a lot of barriers, a lot of, you know, spheres, a lot of biases. We have just say hello to everybody. That's what I love to do because the way I look at it is, and I've said this many times, and many of my friends will hear me say this, is that the worst thing that anybody will ever, ever, ever say to you is that they'll tell you to fuck off, right? And that's never happened to me, ever, just say hello. And the people that do say that don't deserve your time, don't deserve your energy. And so, so yeah, just go up to everybody, say hello, get to know them, you know, and enjoy them. So I love this as well. So I heard this 
This is not really something I created. This is something that I heard at an event called Hub Dot, and it was absolutely fascinating. Learning about that and asking, what's your story? And I think we connect as human beings, yes, to community and belonging, but through stories. So ask, what's your story? And then take it from there. And the next thing is to be an open-minded antenna. Just look forward and absorb everything and go to different events and put yourself in spaces that you wouldn't necessarily go to or attend. So I myself attend many different types of events from many different communities and my life has become so much more richer, you know, and incredibly enlightened just by attending different events from either the black community or, you know, the LGBT community or lots of different communities, and I just love it. And I think it's important just to be an antenna and not just to, uh, sorry, and not just to be there to take, but to absorb and to listen and to give. Because I think it's quite easy to go up to events and just take up space. But I think it's another thing just to unlearn and relearn and support and champion. I think that's something completely different to be open-minded and open-hearted. And the next thing is to create inclusive, safe and accessible environments. And that's pretty self-explanatory. But what I want to just mention in terms of accessible, I don't mean in terms of the, you know, that weird thing about accessible meaning something else, which it doesn't mean. When I mean accessible, I mean specifically accessible to disabled people. And I say that again, it has to be accessible to disabled people. Create safe spaces, create safe inclusive spaces, very much but also make it accessible that disabled people are able to participate in these environments and spaces. And the next thing is real community of belonging above all. And I think, to me, this is quite important, and I think we often focus on products or services, but I think building communities and belonging above everything else, and then everything else will fall in place afterwards. I think, you know, that's a very, very powerful. And, you know, again, equity over equality. And I think once we focus on equity, equity, equity for all of us, then we can push forward and champion each other for equality and justice, really. And so, yeah, so just be bold, be wild, and be fearless. So what do I mean by that? So I mean, being involved is just, you know, doing the most powerful thing that you can. Imagine using your full extent of your creativity and your imagination. And being wild, what I mean by that is having a sense of childlike curiosity and play and just having a huge sense of humor. And, you know, the last thing, being fearless, is just go beyond your fear and just do it anyway and just push forward. I think the last thing is be valuable, not safe. And I think this is a great quote that relates to this by the wonderful, late, great Toni Morrison. And she says, I want to discourage you from choosing anything or making any decisions simply because it is safe. Things of value are seldom are. Wow. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much. I'm Suleiman Khan. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and look forward to aligning together. Thanks. Bye.